At the end of this video, you should be able to explain how the composition of magma affects volcanic eruptions and lava flow, describe the five major types of pyroclastic material, identify the three main types of volcanic cones, describe how a caldera forms, and list three events that may signal a volcanic eruption. Chapter 13, Section 2, Volcanic Eruptions Volcanoes can be thought of as windows into Earth's interior. Lava that erupts from them provides an opportunity for scientists to study the nature of Earth's crust and mantle. By analyzing the composition of volcanic rocks, geologists have concluded that there are two general types of magma. Mafic describes magma or rock that is rich in magnesium and iron and is commonly dark in color. Felsic describes magma or rock that is rich in light-colored silicate ma uh, materials. Mafic rock commonly makes up the oceanic crust, whereas felsic and mafic rock commonly make up the continental crust. Types of eruptions the viscosity, or resistance to flow, of magma affects the force with which a particular volcano will erupt. The viscosity of magma is determined by the magma's composition. Because mafic magmas produce runny lava that has very low viscosity, they typically cause quiet eruptions. Because felsic magmas produce sticky lava that has a high viscosity, they typically cause explosive eruptions. Magma that contains large amounts of trapped, dissolved gases is more likely to produce explosive eruptions than magma that contains small amounts of dissolved gases. Quiet Eruptions Oceanic volcanoes commonly form from mafic magma. Because of mafic magma's low viscosity, gases can easily escape from mafic magma. Eruptions from vo uh, oceanic volcanoes, such as those in Hawaii, are usually quiet. Lava Flows When mafic lava cools rapidly, a crust forms on the surface of the flow. If the lava continues to flow after the crust forms, the crust wrinkles to form a volcanic rock called pohoihoi, which is shown on the screen here. Bohoihoi forms from hot, fluid lava. As it cools, it forms a smooth, ropey texture. Bohoihoi actually means ropey in the Hawaiian language. If the crust deforms rapidly or grows too thick to form wrinkles, the surface breaks into jagged chunks to form a'a. A'a forms from lava that has the same composition as bohoihoi lava. A'a's lava texture results from the differences in gas content and in the rate and slope of the lava flow. Blocky lava has a higher silica content than A'a lava does, and this makes blocky lava more viscous than A'a lava. The high viscosity causes the cooled lava at the surface to break into large chunks while the hot lava underneath continues to flow. This process gives the lava flow a blocky appearance. Explosive eruptions. Unlike the fluid lavas produced by oceanic volcanoes, the felsic lavas of continental volcanoes, such as Mount St. Helens, tend to be cooler and stickier. Felsic lavas also contain large amounts of trapped gases, such as water vapor and carbon dioxide. When a volcano erupts, the dissolved gases within the lava escape and send molten and solid particles shooting into the air. So, felsic lava tends to explode and throw pyroclastic material into the air. Pyroclastic material consists of fragments of rock that form during a volcanic eruption. Types of pyroclastic material some pyroclastic materials form when magma breaks into fragments during an eruption because of the rapidly expanding gases in the magma. Other pyroclastic materials form when fragments of erupting lava cool and solidify as they fly through the air. Scientists classify pyroclastic materials according to the sizes of the particles, as is shown on the screen here. 
Pyroclastic materials that are less than 2 millimeters in diameter are called volcanic ash. Volcanic ash uh, that is less than 0.25 millimeters in diameter is called volcanic dust. Most volcanic dust and ash settles on the land that it immediately surrounds the volcano. However, some of the smallest dust particles may travel around Earth in the upper atmosphere. Large pyroclastic particles that are less than 64 millimeters in diameter are called lapilli, which is a uh, form of a Latin word which means little stones. Lapilli generally fall near the vent. Large clots of lava may be thrown out of an erupting volcano while they are red hot. As they spin through the air, they cool and develop a round or spindle shape. These pyroclastic particles are called volcanic bombs. The largest pyroclastic materials, known as volcanic blocks, form from solid rock that is blasted from the vent. Some volcanic blocks are the size of a small house. Types of Volcanoes Volcanic activity produces a variety of characteristic features that form during both quiet and explosive eruptions. The lava and pyroclastic material that are ejected during uh, volcanic eruptions build up around the vent and form volcanic cones. Volcanic cones are classified as three main types, as described in Table 1 on the screen here. The funnel-shaped pit at the top of a volcanic vent is known as a crater. The crater forms when material is blown out of the volcano by explosions. A crater usually becomes wider as weathering and erosion break down the walls of the crater and allow loose materials to collapse into the vent. Sometimes, a small cone forms within a crater. This formation occurs when subsequent eruptions cause materials to build up around the vent. Calderas When the magma chamber below a volcano empties, the volcanic cone may collapse and leave a large, basin-shaped depression called a caldera. The process of caldera formation is shown on the screen here. Eruptions that discharge large amounts of magma can also cause a caldera to form. Krakatau, a volcanic island in Indonesia, is an example of this type of caldera. When the volcanic cone exploded in 1883, a caldera with a diameter of 6 kilometers formed. Calderas may later fill with water to form lakes. Thousands of years ago, the cone of Mount Mazama in Oregon collapsed to form a caldera. The caldera eventually filled with water and is now called Crater Lake. Predicting Volcanic Eruptions A volcanic eruption can be one of Earth's most destructive natural phenomena. Scientists look for a variety of events that may signal the beginning of an eruption. Earthquake Activity one of the most important warning signals of volcanic eruptions is changes in earthquake activity around the volcano. Growing pressure on the surrounding rocks from magma that is moving upward causes small earthquakes. Temperature changes within the rock and fracturing of the rock around a volcano also cause small earthquakes. An increase in the strength and frequency of earthquakes may be a signal that an eruption is about to occur. Patterns and activity. Before an eruption, the upward movement of magma beneath the surface may cause the surface of the volcano to bulge outward. Special in instruments can measure small changes in the tilt of the ground surface of the, volcan the volcano. Predicting the eruption of a particular volcano also requires some knowledge of its previous eruptions. Scientists compare the volcano's past behavior with current daily measurements of earthquakes, surface bulges, and changes in the amount and composition of the gases that the volcano emits. Unfortunately, only a few of the active volcanoes in the world have been studied by scientists long enough to establish any activity patterns. Also, volcanoes that have been dormant for long periods of time may, with little warning, suddenly become active.
volcanoes can have devastating effects, ranging from the destruction of human property to the temporary alteration of global climate. Most of this destruction occurs as a result of lava flows and ash. Even if an eruption is non-explosive, a flow of lava burns everything in its path and, cooling, buries it in a layer of rock. Ash, too, poses severe problems, sometimes darkening the sky for hundreds of kilometers. It coats the leaves of plants and fills the lungs. When ash settles to the ground, it clogs waterways, buries vegetation, and changes the composition of the soil. In the spring of 1980, Mount St. Helens in Washington State exploded violently, relocating almost two and a half cubic kilometers of rock, enough material to blanket Washington, D.C. in a layer of debris one story deep. The avalanche of rock, ash, and lava rocketed downhill at 240 kilometers per hour, spreading a layer of debris 45 meters thick. Huge boulders fell. Over four billion board feet of timber was leveled, enough wood to build 150,000 homes. Lahars, volcanic mudslides, destroyed roads and transportation lines, while a cubic kilometer of volcanic ash sifted down through the air of 11 states. The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was the most destructive in U.S. history, yet by geologic standards it was just one of many such events. Geologists estimate that when the young Yellowstone erupted 600,000 years ago. It blasted not one, but 1,250 cubic kilometers of ash into the atmosphere, suffocating the land from California to the Mississippi River. Eruptions of this size correspond to periods of great extinction of life. The airborne ash reflects sunlight back into space, creating periods of cooler climate conditions, not just in the immediate vicinity, but worldwide. At this point, you should be able to explain how the composition of magma affects volcanic eruptions and lava flow, describe the, th the five major types of pyroclastic material, identify the three main types of volcanic cones, describe how a caldera forms, and list three events that may signal a volcanic eruption.